Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to make the reset button. First, we need to make some changes to our canvas. Let's go through these quickly. You can pause it if you need to. Screen space, not overlay, but camera, right? I have my canvas selected. I want to change it to screen space camera. Render camera, I'm going to drag my main camera into that box. And then I'm going to change this order and layer to three. Uh, that should bring your text elements from the canvas onto the game view, onto the scene view here. We, we also bring them into the front, right, so that our, our player is not in front of the text and things like that. Okay, so now let's bring in our button. Game object, UI, button. And we're going to size that out a little bit because we want to use it as a touch control. Uh, so we, you know, no harm in making it big. And we're going to change the text to reset. And we're going to make that nice and big so everyone can see it. And maybe we'll go back to the button here and we'll change the color to, you know, red or maybe orange. Maybe like a bright orange. Okay, that looks fine. Now, we want to name this reset button because we're going to have another button later. Next button uh, to move to the next level. So we'll start with our reset button here. Now we've got our reset button and the look of it, but we certainly don't want, you know, this when we play our game. We've got this button in front of everything. We can't see what we're doing. So that's not going to work. So we need to do some some work to get this button to actually uh, not be there when the game starts. So we're going to do that in our player script. So if you open up your player script, you'll notice that I added a few things here. Let me just zoom in a little bit for you. I've got reset or public game object reset. That creates the uh, option for me to plug in this game object in the player script. I've got my reset set active to false in void start. So at the beginning of the video, uh, at the beginning of the game, we're not going to see the, the button. It'll be set to false, active, won't be active. And then at the end, when we die, right, if we hit something that's tagged deadly, uh, then we want to set that active state to true. So it's the same line of code we used earlier, but this time, uh, actually, there's three lines of code here that are running when we touch something deadly. Let's just put those into their own function. So we're going to call this public void I'm dead. Oops. And inside there, we're going to put our three lines of code that we want to happen when we die and here we can just call the function i'm dead and oop, let me not forget my parentheses or that's not going to work so there we go all right now let's go back out to our unity space here and if we look at our player now because we added that variable reset we've now got this receiver for a game object and we want to take our reset button and we want to feed it to that script, right? So there's my reset button there in the reset variable. Okay, so let's see what that did. Okay, we open it up, we play. Okay, the reset button is set active false at the beginning and void start. And when I touch an enemy, oh, there it is, it's reset. And so that's what we want, right? But nothing happens when I click the button, so that's no good. Um, so what I want to do is I want to set it up so that when I click the button, it's actually going to reset the level. So the first thing you want to check is, are my levels in the build settings? So file, build settings, and you notice there are no scenes in this build setting. So I'm going to go to my assets, and I'm going to take my level one, and I'm going to drag it into the build settings. And then I can X that out. So I've got my scene in the build settings now and i'm ready to give this button some functionality so i'm going to create a empty game object game object create empty and i'm going to call this reset controller
And what we want to do is we want to give that the script, the level controller script. Now the level controller script is on the class website. And you'll notice that we've got basically just level controller public class, and it's just got three functions, level one, level two, and back to menu. And all they do is just access the scene manager and load a particular scene. Now it's important that your scenes are exactly this name. Otherwise you'll have to change this name. This is important that this exactly matches your name of your scene. Otherwise the button won't work. All right. So once you have your level controller script all set up, you're going to drag it onto the reset controller. So this game object now, all it is is just a container for that script. And I still haven't really given this particular button which function I want it to run. I mean, there's three different functions here. It can't run all three of them. So I have to specify which function I want this reset button to run. So I'm going to click on the button and you'll you'll notice here, if I click on the reset button in the hierarchy, you'll notice this on click list is empty. I'm going to press the plus button here and it's looking for an object. And this is where we feed in objects that we have used as container for scripts, just like the level controller. So we pull in the reset controller, which has the level controller embedded in it onto the reset button. And now when we drop down this no function, we see the level controller is here. And then the, the uh, several functions that are associated with that are inside uh, this drop down. So I'm going to choose level one, the function level one, because that's what I want this reset button to do to reset level one. And let's try it out. Cross your fingers. Okay. I click the guy, he had die. I click the reset button, and there I am at the beginning of the level once again. And finally, it worked.